Thanks, John. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Mike Gregory, and I'm the Deputy Head of the Toowoomba Anglican College and Preparatory School. Um, we call Gal uh, School Box Galileo after a beautiful um, uh, stained glass window in our chapel. Um, we're in Toowoomba, as the name of the school would uh, suggest, and we've been using School Box for around nine months. Our school's recent history is a very important part of our School Box journey. Um, so I'm just going to explain a little bit about that because it is quite important to, to understand. Who we were with the Toowoomba Preparatory School, which some of you may have heard of. Um, essentially, at the time, up until the end of last year, we were Australia's only co-educational boarding school. We have boarders down to grade one. We now are moving that upwards. Um, in Queensland, previously, year seven was a part of primary school. From the beginning of next year, it's a part of secondary school. And as a consequence uh, of that, because, because we're a boarding school, we needed to, um, we either lost grade seven, which would have been highly detrimental to our business model, or we continued up into the secondary school. So after 103 years in that preparatory model, we are moving into the secondary years, and we're now the Toowoomba Anglican College and Preparatory School. So we were Australia's oldest and only co-educational primary boarding and day school. We're now Australia's newest co-educational K-12 <laughs> boarding and day school. And I'm using a little bit of marketing licence in the K-12 because we're actually at the moment only K-8. But we are licensed K-12. Um, and we are increasingly being known as TAC apps because obviously uh, it's difficult to pick up the phone and say, hello, it's Mike Gregory here from the Toowoomba Anglican College and Preparatory School. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Um, now, the reason why that was really, really important in terms of our school box journey is because we had 103 years of primary schooling experience and no experience with secondary schooling, it was very important that we had a, both from, our, from a message to our market that we were moving in a sophisticated way, and that's going to include um, software, but also for our student management point of view and our learning management point of view, it was very important that we had the tools to enable us to do that. Um, the growing and changing and improving nature of our school required us, among many, many other things, but to procure and implement uh, an, an LMS portal and intranet, which we hadn't had previously in any form. Um, so last year I embarked on a, a quite an extensive procurement process to find the learning management system um, that would best suit us. And we, we narrowed that essentially, that firstly, down to five um, candidates and then ultimately to school box um, for a number of reasons. All the reasons which I'm sure um, that you're all familiar with and, and it is an outstanding tool and, and one of the, the key things that we found in our first na months is just the, the ease of use of um, teachers who have not had a great deal of experience using technology in the classroom in the past which was very much what we were facing in our preparatory school model. Um, so that was one of the key reasons why we went with, uh, with um, Schoolbox was because it was just a very, very easy tool for, for teachers to use, parents to use and ultimately students to use also. So the way I'm just going to reflect on our journey in the first nine months are just on the, key, the three key features, um, the portal, the LMS and the internet. Um, in our first nine months we've successfully implemented and are currently using news and the, the head of the Shaw School said very well this morning that it's something that all we expect all our teachers, all our students and increasingly all our parents to use on a daily basis. And that was something that we set a, a challenge for everybody really early on because we didn't want at any stage to develop a culture of those who used and those who didn't. That was something that we wanted to avoid right from the outset. The news and the calendar are probably the most used parts of our system um, at the moment and we're slowly starting to get there with the learning management and the intranet. We also, our student management system, forgive me I've got a heavy cold, but our student management system is TAS, um, which is a good student management system in many ways. Its interface with um, Schoolbox is difficult, but that's TAS's problem, not Schoolbox's problem. I'm th I'm quite, I, I know in fact um, that Schoolbox would, Schoolbox would love to have a better interface with TAS, um, but that's an issue with TAS. Um, however, we do use the timetable feature, 
which means our timetable exists in TAS and it's automatically seen within Galileo, which is really, really terrific. And if you're not using that, I'd really recommend that you do it because it's um, got great functionality. And even with our small students, um, it's really, really usable in a number of different ways. And I'd be happy to speak at any time to any primary educators here about how to use that in, in really interesting and, and um, new ways. Um, we also <coughs> use successfully now within the portal the activity pages or what I call activity pages and I differentiate those in terms of the faculty course pages, the class pages which are linked to the timetable and then just home pages which are given permissions to different people. We use a lot at the moment the activity pages, so those pages which don't have courses in them and aren't linked to the timetable, we use that a lot. Um, surveys, we use increasingly a lot both as surveys but also forms for various things. Um, and year level pages, which is something that is really, really crucial to get right with, within a primary context. We're work, working towards using the resource booking, um, working that right, on, right at this moment in terms of using that, and that will be in full use at the big, from the start of next year. Also notifications, we see a great future in using that within our school environment, and also as it comes out, the sports module as well. Um, we're also working increasingly to, uh, uh, to, to, to figure out what is going to work best for us in terms of content management. And, in the small groups just previously, we heard a lot in our group how important it is to get that content management side of things right, your, your folder structures and all of those sorts of things. And that's certainly been one of our challenges. The reflections on that is, um, it, I would say to you, for people embarking on this journey, is to get the clerical staff within the school um, and demonstrate the tool to them very, very early in the piece because they're the real drivers in terms of communication at an operational level within the school, so it's really important to get their skills on the tool up and running very early because they're commonly also people who get very wedded to the system that they've got at the moment and reluctant to move to a new one. So that was one of our key strategies early on. And, um, but again, because it's so easy and so usable, they were one around very early, which was terrific. Um, and then design through the system and, and protocols around publishing and updating of news is also something that we had to learn quickly around so that there wasn't old news and it, it wasn't irrelevant. And that's a really important system to get your heads around as well. And then there's the dilemma over who has access and who doesn't have access and to what extent you want to democratise the publishing of calendar events and also news items. Do you want all staff to be able to publish that news or just a limited few? And that's a, a conversation that it's important to have at a number of different levels. Um, make the, also, make, make the school box calendar at your only calendar. We were in a position at the end of last year and beginning of this year where we had three different calendars operating on three different levels and it was obviously very, very difficult to make sure that each of those calendars was up to date and had the same information and when one meeting on one day was changed to a different time or a different place, that it was represented equally across all calendars and it became a real schmozzle. So increasingly, and from again the beginning of next year, we'll have one calendar system and it will be Galileo. And that is something which will be key to the future success of our use of this system. And um, I'm having con conversations with James on how we can do that across different media. So in, in our website and, and also within Galileo. And again, with the notifications, once the um, push notifications becomes available, that will be a big, really, really big success for us, or a key moment for us, because we use our school app a lot in terms of notifying people, particularly because we've got such young boarders, that's really, really important in terms of communicating with parents who sometimes live many, many thousands of kilometres away of quite young children who are in our care. Um, I can describe why that's important uh, specifically if you'd like to know, but I won't bore you all with it now because it's a pretty niche market. Um, the internet, uh, this is probably something that we, we haven't used a lot to this point, but it's something that I can see is going to be really key to the gradual pickup and usage of Galileo within our community. Um, to this point we've successfully implemented and, and, in, and, and in use the faculty, and what I mean by this is not the faculty course pages, 
but the, the page is where we just communicate or describe what's going on in that faculty or in that year level. So year level pages in the primary context. So parents and other teachers can log into those pages and see some storyboards or some, some work samples that's happened, those sorts of things, and we can post videos from our end of term um, showcase days and, and that sort of thing, and we'll have a look in there. But those have been really, really successful, and the parents particularly find that uh, very, very useful because it means that they get a particular um, portal into what's happening in the classroom. Again, coming back to that primary boarding model, that's vital because they're not dropping the child off and picking them up every day. Uh, and, you know, they, they love their children like everyone else in the world loves their children, so they want to see what's happening in the classroom. So this has been a really wonderful tool for us. Um, what's up, we're working towards WebDAV connection. Um, I'm not even actually exactly sure what that is. So w working towards it is going to involve me actually understanding it. I get the basic... <laughs> I get the basic concept um, and I like the basic concept and I can see how important that's going to be, particularly with, with using different devices because like all of you, we, we're in the constant dilemma of deciding which device is best for our students to have, BYOD or iPad or um, PC for example, and I can see that by having that connectability was being really good so you're not having multiple file management systems floating around your servers in different places. Um, one of the things again which we are working towards slowly and we, have, we, we don't have enabled at this stage is the email system and that was my decision very early on. Again I keep coming back to it but because of the primary model we didn't want our students, particularly our border students, having free reign over email and we've got some particular issues around child protection that we wanted to be very careful about that with. Uh, and previously to introducing Galileo, we had very strict protocols on who the students could email and who they could receive emails from. And um, again, there's some, some niche reasons why we have to do that, but we do have to do that. And so we're working slowly around how we're going to use the email systems within it uh, and we are going to use it, but we really have to have some, some really complicated thinking and discussion around that. And, and that's been going on this year. Next year sometime we'll start to step out the use of email within the system. Um, what I'd reflect on in terms of the use of, of the internet is a clear plan and process around the connection between Schoolbox and the student management system that you use. Hopefully all of you use Synergetic because from what I hear there's great connectability between the two systems and I think that's really key to success um, for those people who are embarking or those people who have embarked and are looking at stepping out further. Connecting to the web dev, again I like using the word because it sounds complicated but I don't really know what it is. Um, if possible, from commencement of implementation with staff. And the reason I say that is because it's just that, that that dilemma about training them to do one thing and then having to train them to do a different thing and obviously all staff and teachers find that frustrating. So if you can get it very clear in your mind how you want that to work early then that's going to save you the duplication of having to train and retrain down the, down the track. So that's if it's possible and that's why I put that in there because often it's not because often you don't, well one of the things we've learnt is that you don't know what you want until you've played around with it a little bit. Um, but that's a dilemma you all have to solve for yourselves. In terms of the, the learning management system, this is really interesting from our context because we were, up until the beginning of this year, purely primary. And I see that the, the learning management system from a primary context is very, very different to the learning management system from a context, uh, secondary context. The reason I describe that is because secondary... If you think about secondary school being very subject-based, primary school is very class-based. So when you've got a very subject-based system, then that's where the, the timetable that Galileo or Schoolbox has is terrific because you can click on the cell and it'll take you to th through to that class page. But that's not quite how it works in many, many primary schools, particularly early primary school, where the classroom is the main domain of the learning. A and we've learnt one piece of exam one example of something that we've learnt is that within our timetable structure, to give the class itself an actual class code 
rather than each one of the different subjects that they do a class code so that the class itself can have a class page. Um, and that's not something that we did this year, but it's something that we've learnt to do next year. Um, and I can answer questions about that at the end if you'd like and what I mean by that. But really the way that the students and the teachers will use the LMS in primary school will be quite different to the way that it's used in secondary school. And um, that's clear for a number of different reasons. But we, our staff have been terrific at finding out what those differences are and now designing how our resource file management system will work and our faculty page structure will work also to enable course builders and all those sorts of things. Um, yeah, and, and I won't t touch on that first point because I basically said it. Um, this is something also that it's taken us up until this point to really have clear in our mind but what the difference is between course pages, information pages and class pages is and the way that we now think about it, that course pages are those driving pages where you can draw the course builders down from into your current class pages. And then what we call information pages or activities pages are just those home pages that you can have give access to whomever you like but don't, aren't particularly linked to a class or any particular group um, identified within your timetable. And then also have a really clear strategy around parents' access to these um, and, and each of the cat categories of them. And that's something that we're still coming around to because obviously um, for the first time introducing a learning management system or a portal or an internet uh, of, of this sort where parents can have access to it, it's a big mind shift for our teachers to be able to understand that everything that they're doing or everything that they publish on their class page is going to be open to parents. So we don't currently, but it is something that we're working towards. Um, this got jumbled up when it transferred into to Google, so I'm sorry about that. Um, one of the things I wasn't expecting, and I'm not sure if this link's going to work, but the group within our school who is most adept at using Galileo is our kindergarten. And the reason for that being, as many of you may know or may not know, there are new and very strict kindergarten guidelines in Australia and what that means, one of the things that means is that the teachers have to report daily to the parents on what's been happening in the classroom and for those of you who have got kindergarten students you would know that because you get an email or an SMS or something or other that's describing what's going on. That is national, yeah. Mm. So the one thing I will show you specifically is, with, is our kindergarten page and how it's used. Uh, and it has saved our kindergarten teachers an enormous amount of time in terms of com meeting their daily obligations to report to parents as to what's been happening in the room. Now they don't have to report specifically to what each student's been doing, but they have to report about what's been happening in the classroom each day. And so as a part of our year level pages, the kindergarten page is by far the one which has become most developed and we've got a terrific teacher in kindergarten who's led the way along with our director of early years and it's got a lot of information and it has been from the parents point of view the most visited page on the site far and away um, as you can imagine because obviously us parents we're really interested in our kids when they're little and then decreasingly so as they get older. <laughs> Um, so this is the, this for example is an example of what we would call an activity page because it's not tied particularly to a group and then they'd go into their different classes and within here is where the teacher can just log in and using one of many of the components and you could take your pick, you could just use a text box but they use uh, the blog, they can deliver their daily reports on what's been happening along with a lot of the other sorts of media that they can tap into as well. And as I say, because this is our introduction to, for our parents into our school as well, in 13 years time, 
and hopefully before that, but in 13 years' time, this group of parents is going to know exactly what Galileo is, and from the very first moment they walk into the school, they're going to be adept at using it, because they log in every single day to catch up with what their children have been up to. Um, so we're using that as a key strategy over the next however many years of engaging parents in the use of this. For example, for our Year 8 students this year and our Year 7 students this year, the, the level of, pe getting pe of parent usage on those pages has been far, far, far less. A and our challenge to, to, to motivate those parents and engage those parents is a far more difficult task. So that's one of our strategies around this. Um, I don't know how to move back to the other thing, so I'll just speak to it. One of the... Sorry, two more minutes. One of the, the weaknesses, and I say it's our weakness, it's not a weakness of the site, is the way that we think about what I call the window in terms of I worked at a very big school in Victoria previously that had a learning management system, not school box, and they ha they'd had it for many years by the time I got there, and there were very two very distinct groups on the faculty, those who used it and those who didn't. And th they were 10 or 15 years into the use of this tool and a an staggering amount of the faculty had never even logged into it. And I thought that was absolutely mind-blowing. And that was something that I wanted to avoid when we implemented this tool right from the very beginning to make sure that we had really strong usage from among the faculty right from day one. So by the time it was no longer new and that window had closed, we didn't have this group over here who had sort of missed out on the enthusiasm or didn't engage on the enthusiasm of it being new and therefore were for eternally stranded. So we're juggling that at the moment and, and some things we've done really well, some things we haven't done well at all, um, but I say we've probably got two or three years to really, really get it right, otherwise there, we are at that risk of losing that, that group of faculty who will never be, to, never be found again. And that's a little bit carrot and it's a little bit stick. Um, but it's a really, really important one and something that we keep on reflecting on how we do it. Um, but that's me. Thank you very much.